what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Borderlands 3 and today is pretty exciting because if you guys caught the uh, Gearbox PAX presentation this weekend, you may have already heard this, but if you haven't, then there's some cool new stuff coming to Borderlands 3. Of course, if you caught the most recent DLC, we had the, technically speaking, last DLC expansion, at least for the time being, but they recently revealed in the Gearbox PAX panel that there will not only be next-gen support coming for Borderlands 3 that allows us to carry on the journey into the next generation, but there will also be some expansions giving our existing Vault Hunters a new skill tree. I know they have gone on record before to say there'll be no new Vault Hunters, but at least having new skill trees means we're gonna have completely new ways to play. So, with that being said, in this video, I wanna go over what we know so far. The focus for the time being on the PAX panel was for Flak. We did get a couple of small, quick snippet looks at some of the other classes, but for the time being, they went through Flak skill tree, and then I imagine at a later date, they're gonna go through the other one. So, as and when they do cover them, I'll of course keep you guys up to date, but for the time being, let's talk about the next steps for Borderlands. So if you do enjoy this, again, a like will be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think of this, but let's get started. So, very quickly, quick next-gen summary. Borderlands 3 is coming to next-gen consoles with Xbox Series X and PS5 and it's supporting 4K resolution at 60 FPS in single player. However, on top of that, they also said that players on next generation consoles can enjoy three and four player local co-op with an additional update to two player co-op allowing for vertical split screen on both generation versions of the game. The game and your save files will carry over to the newer generation consoles as long as they are within the same family. So that basically means if you have an Xbox one and you go to Xbox Series X, you can move it over. If you have a PlayStation 4, you can move it to your PlayStation 5, but you can't of course do that cross, so you can't send your Xbox save to your PlayStation. Pretty standard stuff, but that's basically how it works. So that will be completely supported. And crossplay is planned for 2021. No further details than that, we're gonna have to wait for more information, but the fact that they do plan to have crossplay at some point is also pretty exciting. So that's the kind of next gen housekeeping out of the way. But now if we turn our attention to the new skill trees, there will be a new DLC arriving later this year, which will bring with it a new skill tree for each of the four Vault Hunters. So as mentioned, the focus for the Gearbox panel was Flak. So let's talk about that one first. There is a new skill tree called the Trapper Tree, and this will of course give Flak access to a new pet, which this time is a, a robot instead, as opposed to the kind of conventional sort of, you know, actual animals. And uh, your action skill on this one is Gravity Snare, which allows Flak to toss out a trap that knocks enemies into the air and temporarily stuns them, interrupting whatever they're doing. The trap is activated periodically, affecting any nearby enemies, and this then gives Flak a powerful crowd control ability that they can then use to lock down and eliminate multiple foes. The trap can also be picked up early in order to refund a portion of the cooldown. So that is pretty sweet if you want some kind of, you know, crowd control options. As mentioned, this comes with a Hyperion Loaderbot pet, which can be specced in a variety of ways. You have the Ion Loader, which uses a long-ranged shock sniper rifle and can fire slow-moving projectiles that can be shot to create powerful shock novas. On command, it will then fire an eye laser at enemies. And additionally, Flak gains 30% increased elemental resistance whilst using this pet. The Bull Loader, which charges enemies on command, knocking them into the air. It's armed with an auto shotgun and a shield, as well as a powerful roundhouse kick ability. And Flak gets 20% increased shield capacity when using this pet. And you then have the War Loader, which packs an incendiary shotgun, can toss grenades, and on command, unleashes homing missiles on your enemies. Flak also gets an increased fire rate, 12%, while using this pet. The tree itself, of course, focuses around giving you and your pets more survivability. So, Following that, they then went through just a few of the perks. They didn't scan over the entire tree, but here's a few of the things they did speak about. We have Success Imminent, where whenever Flax or their pet's shield breaks or is filled, they and their pet create a Radiation Nova. This skill has a short cooldown. You then have Better Toys, where Flack and their pet gain increased shield recharge delay and shield recharge rate. You have Lethal Force Authorized, where whenever Flak's loader bot pet would go in to fight for your life, it turns into an XP loader instead and seeks out a nearby enemy before self-destructing, dealing damage to all nearby enemies, and Flak's pet's respawn time is then reduced. You have Take This, where Flak's pet gains a copy of Flak's shield. Woolly Armor, where Flak's shields are full, their pet gains damage reduction. Fuzzy Math, where whenever Flak or their pet scores a critical hit, a portion of Flak's and their pet's shields are restored. Keep them safe, where whenever Flak issues an attack command, if Flak or their pet shield is less than half full, a portion of Flak's and their pets are restored. And this skill has a short cooldown. And finally, the last one they showed is Capacitance, where whenever Flak activates their action skill, they gain greatly increased shield capacity for a short time and immediately begin recharging their shields. This skill has a short cooldown. So again, as mentioned, 
This is more so around survivability. So if you wanted to spec Flack to be a little bit more tanky, I know of course he is, you know, he's a very kind of powerhouse style character. He has a lot of kind of, you know, crit options and whatnot, especially with his fadeaway setup. But having the kind of ability to go into a more sort of crowd control tanky role, you know, lean more so into your pets. It'll be interesting to sort of see how maybe if you have like a Beastmaster slash Trapper tree, or kind of build, should I say, that might make for some rather interesting setups, which I'd really like to see because, you know, I feel like a lot of flak builds don't necessarily lean too much into Beastmaster, it is largely speaking the other two trees. So I'm very interested to sort of see how this plays out. However, on top of that, there were a few passing mentions to some of the other characters. So while we haven't had a look at their skill trees, there are a few clip montages that feature the other characters, the other Vault Hunters, and one of these clips does of course show Flax Gravity Snare, which we know to be the action skill, as well as three other very flashy looking abilities that we can safely assume are the other characters' action skills. Amara is shown punching a ball of energy at enemies, which then hangs in the air and pulses Nova damage. Curiously, the damage numbers are icy blue, which signifies cryo, meaning Amara may be getting access to cryo as an element in her new skill tree. This is further supported by the fact that her tattoos are white, a colour not currently available to her. On top of that, you have Moe's, who is shown pulling out a hologram of an iron bear before a much smaller pet-sized iron bear begins to materialise, suggesting that she will instead be able to utilise a miniature remote-controlled iron bear with her new skill tree. And the other ability shown, which we can assume is for Zane via process of elimination, is a large elemental laser cannon that pops up at the top corner of the screen, unleashing a powerful laser at enemies. Maybe this is like an expansion to your drone, something like that. But either way, that is it for the time being. That's a quick rundown of the new stuff they showed so far. Again, I imagine there'll be a, you know follow-up videos and whatnot at some point, taking a look at the other skill trees. And as and when they do show up, I will of course give you guys the uh, lowdown. But for the time being, that's what we have. So again, let me know what you guys think. What do you think of Flak's new skill tree? Does that sound appealing to you? Would you change the way you play Flak if this was the case? You know, would you kind of adopt a slightly more tanky, pet-focused playstyle? Or do you think it's going to be hard to move away from, uh, you know, what you know best? Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.